Good hello! Welcome to Wanyin Skin. Isn't it so much fun to animate a body that you're only seeing from the waist up? Because you don't have to draw the legs, so you can just get away with tweening it, bobbing it up and down. But tweening those bobs in such a way that it still looks like a walk can be a bit tricky. Even more so if it's a character moving towards the camera as opposed to just across the screen. I'm going to show you a simple but very effective technique and what's best is that you can even do it with just a, a blank square if you want, that will work. But you know me, I've prepared a wacky character, there we go. Despite the movement, I'm going to use a flattened still image one for this demonstration. Create a new peg by pressing this button here, select the peg and in layer properties, change it from a 3D path to a separate. This is probably the most important step and we'll see why in a bit. I'm gonna place a keyframe at the beginning and at the end. You can set this up to be a shortcut. I think it's F7 by default. Otherwise you can find these two buttons here to add a keyframe, right click timeline view if these buttons are not available. Using the free transform tool, I'm gonna to position the character quite small and low at the start and quite large and tall at the end. And across 40 frames, we get a movement that looks like that. So it doesn't yet look like a walk. We could go in and start moving it up and down for every keyframe and try and get looking just right, but there's a quicker way. I'm gonna pop down another keyframe every 10 frames or so, uh, like that. It doesn't make any difference yet, they are just points. But now if I highlight them all and choose this button here, this preset easing thing, and choose the steepest S one, watch what happens now. All right, that's made quite a big difference already. By selecting on any one of these keyframes, there's also this button here, set ease for multiple parameters. By clicking on that, we can see exactly what that S curve is doing. It's very steep indeed. If you're new to this chart, there's two keyframes represented here and here. These represent this one and this one. Moving across is in time, moving through the timeline, but going up is the amount of movement that has happened as a percentage. Start of the movement, end of the movement. So we can see from this that it starts off very slowly, then a lot of movement happens very quickly over the course of like two frames, and then it slows right back down again as it settles into its conclusion, which is what we see. You can pick up and move these handles to make any adjustments and navigate through them by pressing apply next or apply previous. I'm gonna move forward to the second one where I can see one section towards the rear. And it's here we can introduce a technique called overshoot. By grabbing this handle, I can push the curve beyond 100%. This is why we set the peg type to separate. If we had a 3D path, this doesn't work. By pushing it beyond 100%, it's actually going to move further than its destination and then come back again. So by bringing it up to about there, I'm gonna go apply next and move each one to a similar point. Going beyond 100%, just like that. When I've finished, press apply and close. And now, it looks like it's making steps. Starting to look a lot more authentic, but there's still a couple more things we can do. First, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this set. It serves a couple of purposes. One, it's a backup if we go past a point of no return. And second, it is gonna be a reference point from here on. Select all of the keyframes that we've made so far, and there is a button here. It's called Create Keyframes On. And what this does, it makes things into twos. That's what it should be set to by default, so we can just press OK, and we'll notice now that it's automatically slapped a keyframe down on every second frame and broken the tweens. So now its pacing is gonna have a bit more of a hand-drawn feel. OK, we're nearly there. Last step, I wanna give it a bit of pause after each step. This is why we made a clone, because now all of these look exactly the same. It's very chaotic to be able to tell where a step begins or ends. But that's okay, our backup will show us exactly where those pacings are. So on the frame of each step, I'm gonna copy that keyframe and paste it onto the second one. This is gonna ensure that the step holds for just a little bit longer, and that should be enough to really sell the movement. There we go, that's all it takes. Continue to experiment more if you like. Perhaps you want the middle of the movement to be even faster and compress that down into ones, which gives a look like this. A bit more impatient and menacing, I guess. But yeah, there you go. Interrupt your tweens with extra keyframes and mess with the easing to change the time. Also, experiment with overshoot. Go beyond 100% and have a bit of snap and pullback without needing to animate it manually. Have fun with your endeavors. I'll see you next time. Take care.